Hey guys. hey guys, welcome back to the Jalty Podcast. Welcome back to another episode, guys. Today it is currently Thursday, April 18th at 4.25 p.m. So happy, happy evening. Today has been so hot. I stink. <laughs> me too, me too. Bro, I smell like rotten onion. That's what I smell like. Dude, I smell, and you know what's crazy? I had it like... I forgot what smelling was like because we haven't been in like hot temperatures in a few months. Like you forget in the winter, like you forget what it's like to smell, right? Because it, it's not that you don't put on deodorant. It's just like I could use bulletproof deodorant and I'll still smell. It's just like you just that summer heat and it's not summer, it's spring, but it's been like in the 80s. And I'm like, shit, I, I forgot. I find it when I eat healthier, I don't smell as much. But I think when I eat like trash, like I did in the past couple of days, that I'm eating like such of the sugary stuff that it sweats out through my body and it smells even worse. There has to be a science to that. I think so. Huh? You know what? Now that you say that, yeah, there might be a science to that. But, you know, aside from all of that, I think it's also because we've been like, active so like i forgot what it's like to have that sticky feeling like you know after we've been running so you feel sticky and just sweaty and just nasty i know Ooh. i haven't felt like this since high school when i was in soccer no it's literally so real it, it's crazy because i you just forget like when winter comes you forget but we're getting back into summer guys so uh smelling era is coming uh, it's out uh, it's re it's here but when the sun when the the smelling era comes that means the bed or what is it called the bath and body works comes too. the what bath and body works because that's where you get your fresheners from jake i get bath and body works fresheners year long nah, what do you mean i haven't seen you get like a haul like done a haul in a while and i haven't taken you in a jake, minute because i got sponsored by them right and so i got so much stuff that i have literally wall plugs everywhere <laughs> you you have you have one everywhere except my room and my bathroom and yeah, i'm so there's sad. no fixing that you have one in the garage what do you have one in the garage for the garage will smell. Yeah, it does smell. Sometimes it'll smell. It'll stink up. Anyway, we are officially back home from van life. You guys, we've been home for about four days now. And initially, we were supposed to podcast the Thursday that we were still in the van. But I think... So the Wi-Fi ended up becoming a huge issue that we didn't think we were going to have. But it became huge. Like... It was really stressing us out really bad, but we're going to get into all of that and we're going to really break in, you know, breaking the, the van life experience and kind of like how we feel after we did it because we were in the van for almost two weeks and really explain where we're at. So we went to, or first of all, first of all, I want to give like a big note that we went to a van expo. So basically, if you don't know what a van expo is, a van expo is like they show like a whole bunch of brands that build their own vans, custom vans show off their like their custom made uh, van and tell you the details that they have in theirs and you could customize yours with their like uh, their actual company and we went to that and there was over probably like 30 brands of or companies of vans that make their own custom vans and I feel like we've seen a whole bunch of options so my my opinion from our van life that we had can change based on like seeing all those other vans that are possible you know because there was like a big space gap there was a lot of like little space. I mean, minimum space we could have used compared to the other vans that we've seen at the expo. Um. So, yeah, because I feel like our perspective changed because there's so much that you just don't know about vans, right? Up until you actually go in and you live in a van, there's things that you wouldn't even imagine, right? Like you don't understand what utilizing space is up until you are crammed into a van and you have to <laughs> fit your entire life in there, right? So you you realize what space really is and you utilize every little spot so yeah when we went to that van expo what another thing is though at that expo most of them were the long bays right. so the van that we rented out was like the 144 which is like the smaller mercedes sprinter and then they have the 170 which is like the full size right cool part about the one that we had is that we park it in any parking spot you guys saw that in the vlog anywhere we fit anywhere we're like a normal car the longer ones you don't fit as well everywhere just because you're a little longer and you gotta you know keep in mind for those extra what 40 inches so that's a, that's a big thing to know but at the same time those longer vans you fit more things in it right and realistically speaking if we are trying to purchase a van we're gonna go for the 170 no brainer like there's just no and at first we're like we don't need more than the 140 but with the dogs we would need the 170 I remember when, um, when we were doing our first, I think one of our first uh, harvest hosts or whatever they were called at that farm, the guy gave us um, a little like 
little tip. He said, if you guys are going to be living together in a van, get the biggest van because he says space is bad. And I, I, I agree because I feel like with tight spaces, you put two people that need space. Yeah. Like pretty often they're going to butt heads, you know, and I think we could be like a big that could be a big thing for us if we're constantly butting heads like I'm washing dishes. And then you're trying to go on the bed to edit or something. Yeah, it's not that it became a problem because it wasn't a problem, but I could see how it could have been a problem. Just because we were trying to like, you know, you wanted to get clothes out of the closet, but you couldn't do it because I was in the dishes area. But then if you're not in the dishes area, you're literally sitting in the, like th there's just not enough um, walkway space. Like, do you really want to park in a compact space or not compact, but like a smaller space and save that like, what's it called, like the money and then, it's also convenient for you or do you want to go extra mile and do not even an extra mile. It's like literally go the other 30, 40 inches and get the longer van, but you're not able to park in the convenient spaces for you. Yeah, no, it's, for sure. Get the longer. Yeah. One. All the, I'd, yeah. I'd lose the conveniency. Yeah. 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 For sure. For sure. I agree. And so, yeah, let's, let's get into it because a van life, I always imagined it to be a certain way and it ended up being better. <laughs> better and did you in ever a lot follow, of ways did you ever follow van life i followed it not not like you did you followed it to a different yeah. extent i think i, I was just so but i think every girl is like every girl has van life in their like pinterest board that's just the way it is <laughs> but i've always always like wanted wanted to do van life like that was the thing right and obviously when that like the case happened with gabby do you remember that that's no. when it oh Gabby's, yes do you remember? oh so my gosh when that happened with her i remember it was this huge thing in the van community. I remember it was like a huge outbreak because I don't remember. I mean, there probably was a lot of terrible cases that have happened in vans and it, just, it didn't blow up to the level that her case did, right? But what, I remember when that blew up, like I feel like it slowed the van life like aesthetic down a little bit because I would literally see it day and night everywhere. And then that happened, right? And then it shed a really bad light on van life. Mm. But I would always follow it. Like, I've always wanted to do van life, right? Everyone always has. Every girl. It's funny because everybody in the comments was kind of like, I've always wanted to do this. Like, So this it is, is like cool. that. It is like everyone has like, kind of like your mindset. Yeah, all the girls that. do, I think. Oh. And I'm sure guys, but in a different way. Like, for me, it was always like the aesthetic, like by the beach, wood, van, like, you know, that kind of vibe. <laughs> so I always had an idea, but it turned out to be better than that because we, we were, you're able to go anywhere. Literally anywhere. Like there's so many off grid things you can do to your van to like where you're not able, you're when you're not uh, to the point where you need to like have the energy and to sustain your like your life. Right. Do you think that like remember? Okay. So like another guy, bro, this guy that we met at the farm was a genius. He's he puts solar panels on oh. anything and he makes it to where he doesn't need anything like any of the energy uh, electric outlets and stuff. He makes it all solar panels. Imagine He's being a, off okay, grid so like he that. was a he was an engineer, so he did solar for solar panels. So he could basically like make any property that didn't have utilities and stuff. He could make it off, like an off grid property. He could bring it to life because he was like an engineer. They're doing construction in one of the townhomes near us. So we don't you know hear which it, one. I'm sorry, but I, I don't hear it on here. I hear it outside, but if you hear it on the mics, it's like drilling. That's our karma because we freaking put flooring and we were doing this shit for like weeks. So <laughs> we just need to be quiet. So yeah, the. Basically, there is, with Part van two. life, like, you are able to pretty much be off-grid for a good amount of time just because we didn't require to be hooked up to electricity because our things were charged through our solar panels and through the actually, like, running the engine. And then you also have a water tank, and our water was pretty big. Like, we could live off, if we were conservative, we could live off of that water for at least four days. Like, if we were, or probably more, honestly, yeah, because we were good. The main thing that we were doing uh, that wasted the water was either showering or washing dishes, but... If we the get paper plates, the biggest thing. if you get paper plates, it's just, uh, you just throw it away. And then showering, we didn't have to shower every single day. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. Okay. So that's something that I want to talk about too, because I, there was um, a few people that were coming to me like, what, like I could never not wash my hair. I could never not shower every day. It's like, you don't have a choice. When you, f when you take that first shower, expecting it to be hot, warm, whatever, and it's freezing cold on your body, you're like, okay, the shower, I could get away from that for a little no, while. No, not it's even a just torture. that. It's not that. It's not for the temperature, For me, that's guys. what it was. No, it's the fact that you don't have the resources for it, Jake. If we were taking, okay, so the first two days, the, the first three days, I took a shower every single day. Every single day. Because that's what you do, right? You're outdoors and you're sticky. But then we were running out of water like every two days. And then we found out we're like, we can't do this because you cannot. So 
finding water was a little tough too. Like not every place has it. So we would have to like drive around to a bunch of gas stations, call and like, we would honestly, we'd go to truck stops and they had water there, but you kind of learn that you can't like showering is a privilege. Like you cannot do it every day. It's just not the way it is. And there's people like in that do van life who have smaller tanks that quite literally probably have to shower like once a week. It's just the way it is. You learn to live like that. Like I know it sounds gross, but your little bougie life that you have at home that you can shower every day, that's a privilege. And that when you're is. on the van, you you can't do it. Unless, unless you're like really off grid and there's like lakes. I mean, you go shower in the lake or something. And but then, then just wash off afterwards. That works. That actually works. That probably works. Yeah. But then you can't take shampoo into the lake because then you're contaminated. So you're just, you're just rinsing yourself with water. Point is, you don't have the luxury of doing it every day. You get used to it. You're fine. You'll be okay. Um, but I mean, that was, that was not that big of a deal. Honestly, the biggest thing I feel like that was hard was just, the parking and I think that we would have to for sure figure something out but other than that it was so much better than I thought it was gonna be yeah the parking and like the like the being safe is super sketch like in yeah. van life I think that's why a lot of people hold themselves from doing it because imagine being uh in a car where anyone could break a window you have like 20 front doors around you if it if a window gets broken someone has access to you to your stuff yeah. and that but Man, that that first night just like set a different alarm. I wasn't going to sleep right away after yeah, that. Yeah, it set the tone for us for sure. But then we we got okay. Like we learned, we learned. Like you don't park behind. And then also a lot of people were commenting that we were in like the downtown Reno area. I had no idea, and I guess it's like really bad. I had no idea about that either. Me so neither. You just you look, you go, you know, you live and you learn, and it, it is what it is. But other than that, like it was so much fun, and we just don't know what our next step is from here because so oh, damn i don't want to say because then i feel like a hypocrite or not a hypocrite but like i feel like we're lying to them why would we lie to them because originally our idea is purchasing a house right yeah so that's what it is that we just don't know what we want to do with our life and i think that me and jake are and honestly i think we're stressing ourselves out too much right now because we, this isn't a decision that we have to make now but i feel like we feel like we have to because we feel like time is running out, which it isn't, but it kind of is. To be honest, it gives me throwbacks of when I was 18. Uh, no, no, when I was 17, turning 18, and I wanted to move out of my parents' house. But, like, I had no right to want to move out of my parents' house. Like, I don't know why I was burdening myself this much. It came out of nowhere. And I'm like, if I'm 18 and I have to, and I have to live here, I'm um, like, I'm going to be, like, I'm going to be an inconvenience and stuff like that. Yeah. And I don't know why I thought that. Because in all reality, there's no problem with it. And yeah. I just wish, like, I called myself down back then. So maybe I think you should take it slow. Here's the thing. Okay, we're going to tell you guys our dilemma. And feel free to, like, let us know what you think that we should do. Um, we're just be, give us your, your – we want your unsolicited advice. So we're going to be pretty uh, pretty specific with our situation, all right? We're yeah. not going to give cities names or nothing like that. But we're going to give you guys our info, our little – Bill of the tea right here. This is the real yeah, jaddle tea. This is the real jaddle tea. Okay, so Van Like I I feel like it really just kind of like opened up our minds that into like the fact that there's just a different way to live. Like I feel like it's so common for people to take the traditional route of like, you know, you grow up and you bitch ass flies. You go to college and you get a job and then I you caught it. No, you did it. It's over look, look, here, look, babe. Look. What the he disappeared. You did not get, you weren't even near it. Okay, okay, okay. You get a, you know, you get a job and then you buy a house and then you settle down, you know, naturally like where you were raised and then that you live out your life. And I feel like there's so much different ways that you can live it. And I feel like I remember growing up and I used to, you know, see people and, and hear about people who would just kind of travel. Like they would just travel, like and they wouldn't make money, like a lot of money, but they wouldn't travel like luxury travel. Like they would just kind of like go and live in random places for like in a small little town for cheap and just like travel. Like truly, I would rather travel around nearby where I live. And then instead of like doing that luxury travel to Australia, like we did, because that, that was not luxury travel, babe. I think it was. Wait. Yes. Australia was luxury travel to an extent, to an extent. Well, I, it was, but we, because we didn't pay for it. It didn't feel like it was luxury travel because it didn't come out of my bank account. Uh -huh. I feel like that's why I don't really see it. No, but you're right. Like, I feel like luxury travel was like our Aruba trip. Dude, that was luxury travel as well. But see, like, would you rather do one trip like that every three years or would you rather do like, like a van life and travel around? It's not even a van about van life though, Jake. Like you could pack everything up and go to Europe for cheap. Like for really, like you can use, what are those houses called? 
um, like the ones where you like pay like 10 bucks and you, there's other people that sleep there. <laughs> I don't know. I you saw one Gilmore about? Girls. Yeah. No, that's a real thing. Mm. Like people like, who. Like you're backpacking. Yeah, yeah. So there is like cheap ways to travel, right? And I feel like people, you hear about people who do that and you're just kind of like, oh, I could never, I need a stable home. Like I need, you know, structure and all that. And I just think that I was kind of closed minded to everything prior to this van trip because I always thought that I needed to just like buy a house and feel secure and feel some sense of or like Airbnb. Security. Yeah. Like I just felt, I don't know in a different way, but I feel like van life really changed my perspective because I realized that I was fine everywhere I was at, like, because we were together. That's what I was going to say. I was about to say, because you were with me. Yeah. <laughs> like I felt like I was fine because we were together and we and knew that, that our dogs were safe. So like, I feel like our dogs were out of the picture at this point. Yeah. Because they were safe. Yeah. So yeah. I did miss just, them though. Like if they would have been there, it, we could have stayed for way longer. Yeah. But I did feel safe with you. Like I'm like, okay, if I don't know what to do, then I'm going to ask Nat. She has like better ideas than I do. So we are like constantly uh, taking a step forward each day with our van life. It just kind of felt like, how do I explain this to you guys? Like in the best way is probably like, I just, I always had an idea that, you know, we would have to buy a house and then once we had the house, we would get married. And then once we got married, we'd have children. And then I would just raise them here with their grandparents. And then we rot and die. But after this van trip, I don't know what I want to do anymore. I feel like there's so much out there. And I want to see all of it. And I want to experience all of it. In the best way. And I feel like we're so young right now. And I feel like right now is the time to experience it. And to really figure out like, where do we, where, where do we want to buy a house? You know, like why, why should we buy a house here? If we're not even sure this is where we want to settle. And plus we already have two houses. So like we already have invested in the real estate market. Like why don't we just go elsewhere? So, but, and then I also feel like people don't, don't seem to put, um, like your travel era along with like you're setting yourself up, like putting your chess pieces in the right spots to set yourself up for the future. They don't put those at the same age, right? Like if I'm either doing, I'm either staying at home working and grinding or going out partying, but like you could technically, you could do both with our job. So like our travel era where we could make money off of, we could travel and make money that's to set the, the pieces thing. up. No, that's literally what you just said. That's the thing though, that like for us, like we could work while we travel and that's what makes our job so unique. And that's what gives us the tools to be able to do it. And I feel like we're in such a blessed position and I feel like we don't have to just buy a house and settle and then have kids because we have such an awesome job that allows us to let, you know, show the world, the world. So it's like, we could totally take this opportunity and that is where we're at. So we're stuck because we don't know whether we want to like rent out what we have our place right now and just leave and just like travel. Like, because we- I feel like if we, I was having this conversation with you the other day, I feel like if we sell this property, our future self are going to be disappointed at ourselves because this is a, babe. that's not even in the question. No, no, no. I know we're not selling this that's property. The, and that's another thing because a property that we want to get is really pricey. Oh, you're so yeah, we, the properties that we want are just like literally like over a million dollars. And it's just, you're getting a bank for your bug, but it is still a mil- it, over a million dollars at the end so of the day. It's so much money. And like, do we want to spend over a million dollars for a property? And that means that now we're tied down to staying in that property because we paid so much money for it. And we don't even know if you want to live in California. So it's like, and we haven't even traveled the world, you know? So that's literally the reason why we got this townhome was because we had the freedom to kind of just leave because this property wasn't, you know, a million dollars so it was like we're comfortable it's a small little area we don't have a maintenance of a yard it's perfect we can travel you know it could it's just amazing but you know as we were obviously looking for a yard for the girls which we still do need a yard but where do we want a yard do we want it here do we want it in freaking vermont like we don't know where we want it so we are right now so this is the dilemma we are debating renting out our town home selling everything we own or rent it furnished which i think renting it furnished might be the better option just because getting furniture up in this townhome was so hard like you guys saw like we had to freaking crane our bed through the balcony like it's hard so maybe getting you know renting this place out furnished with everything that we have just like rent it out 
just take us, the dogs, and a little bit of our clothes and sell everything and just, like, travel. And travel in the sense of, like, signing short leases in different areas, like one to two month leases in kind of like what we're trying to do with this place. Cause there's a way to rent out homes for like, usually they'll do three months. So it's like a three month lease. And then you it's furnished already and you're able to live there for three months. And I, I like the timeline of three months. Actually, I think that's perfect. You just live in different areas. Like we could start maybe on the, I, I want to start in Oregon. In Oregon, you know what I was thinking though. I think we should start in the East Coast because they get so much snow that I don't know if I'm willing to do a winter in the East Coast. Does that make sense? Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. So uh-huh. maybe start in the East Coast because their summers are well. We've never had a summer like that, and then they have like really pretty. And then in the winter we could come this way where we still get snow. Like if we go to fucking like. I don't know, like Colorado, they still get snow, but it's not snow like Vermont. You know what I mean? I don't know. Or we or we can. Who who knows? Just kind of go anywhere. Yeah, we can go anywhere anytime. We we would be able to. We would be enabled to go anywhere anytime. Yeah. Just like get little leases. And I know the thing that sucks about that is like, yeah, we're you know, throwing away like rent money. But the adventure. And we're already like we already have properties that we're invested in and I don't know. It's so much fun. What do you think? I, I really would love to get a big house with a lot of land. And because we didn't we didn't uh, give them information on our next plan, like our next move. But hopefully, if everything goes right, we get a house with big land and we create a little farm. That would be so cool, right? We create our little farm. That's like our, our idea with a big yeah, house. Yeah, we just but, want, yeah. But if that doesn't go, go as planned, then we actually would do the van life and I have no problem driving everywhere around no, but and I doing the little even, leases. Babe, but I wouldn't even do van life. It would be, yeah, no, I know, but it would be, it would be technically the van life because you're packing up all your things and truck not, life. We're, we're going in your truck. Mm, it's not van life. Yeah. Van life is living out of a van. We're not living out of a mm-hmm. van. We would get like a short term lease somewhere in these states and then we would just take the cars. Um, we'll just have Jake's truck haul my car and then we'll just leave and how <laughs> that'd be cool. so cool <laughs> how cool like you know every three months like what's the new state we're going to you know and that'd be super cool and get to experience different you know areas of the world because i don't know i think this is actually something that we were speaking of oh because okay let me tell you so there was this property that we loved but we literally got news today that okay. they accepted an offer about and it. we have a viewing tomorrow we had a, an appointment for, to view it tomorrow but they already accepted an offer today so the person who went to go see this house this morning and you know what's crazy we were supposed to go this morning isn't that crazy we were supposed to go this morning but we couldn't because i had an appointment so i had to move it till tomorrow and they got that appointment and the people who went this morning submitted a cash offer and they accepted it and that was like honestly our dream property like we wanted to go see it because it had everything you guys like it had a pool it had it was a farmhouse it was a beautiful farmhouse in a very rural area but it had like it was two acres like it had space for animals like it it was so so beautiful we're actually still gonna be able to go see it tomorrow just because um basically the agent was like come look at it like if things don't go through with this offer like we will have you guys as a backup truly money talks so if we place a higher offer than their cash offer then uh, the seller could give it a little like a little eye and be like okay actually i don't want this i agree yeah money does talk but because i don't know if i'm a seller and i'm selling the house for this amount of money i would wait the extra 30 days to get that extra amount of money buying a house cash how much money do you have to whatever continue like, I don't care if it's, if I'm getting a cash offer and it's below my asking price, but I'm getting another offer and it's not cash, but it's like closer to my asking Just price. wait the 10 I'm, days. I'm going to wait. It's not even 10. It's it probably, is 10. Is because it? a cash offer will close in about like 10-ish days, but we can close in like 25, 30. Yep. That's, like 10 days. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I, we also have to play it smart though. What do we truly want to do? Do we want to do the life where we're in a truck going uh, place to place? Or do we want to get a because, big house? Because, babe, if we get that place, like, we cannot leave. At least not for the first year. Because it's like, we now are taking in the responsibility of animals. And animals are a serious thing. Like, you cannot just house animals and then just leave them. Mm-mm. That's not okay. And granted, we have people who obviously house it for us and then they could house it over there. But it's like, 
no, like if you get a property of that price, of that size, like you need to be at some sort of ready to settle. And I don't know if we are, but everything happens for a reason because the fact that they took somebody else's offer should tell us something, right? Maybe it's not meant to be for us, but we'll see what happens tomorrow. And that'll be like the biggest dealer, but we've just been, and I love that we're on the same page because I feel like it makes everything easier because I, when we speak, it's like, I think it's easy, easy for you because I'm very, not versatile, but like, I'm very open. Like I'm, I don't have like a set plan that I want to do yet. You always tell me like, whatever you do, like I'll follow you. And like, it literally warms my heart so much because you're, truly just willing to do anything that I say. And it's so awesome because I don't I feel like I don't have to. Well, because, you know, I have a plan, but at the same time, like you're just so trusting in my plan. But I also I do appreciate. Yeah, that. yeah, I do give you advice too, like or not advice, but like I would do give me like put my input. And I always try to ask like the goods and bads. Yeah, like, what do you think? Give me your second set of eyes. Like, what do you think in this situation? And like, this is something we haven't been able to figure out. And we've been literally sleeping on it since we got back from van life, which was four days. Dude, I haven't slept for four days because it's so stressful. And it's exactly that, what you were saying. Like when you turn 17, because you feel like you almost have to make a decision, even though you don't, you feel feel like you do it's like those there's always eyes on you if you don't do it it's like my own eyes that are on me for some reason maybe it is your own eyes because nobody told me to leave no one yeah it has to be within yourself yeah like it's like a clock like an inner clock that you have and nobody's telling you that you have to make a decision but you almost feel that way and like it's so tough because i feel like it's not that time's running out because it's not that right but if we leave right we want to leave for at least a year just going around town, you know, leave for a year. And it's like, okay, after what's, what's next? Are we going out of the country after that? Like, or are we, you know, after we've traveled enough, we find out where we want to live, boom, buy a house, live, have kids. Like we just don't know. But I think that right now it's so hard for us because this, if we lock into a house, like that's it. And the fact that we're kind of scared of that should give us some input, right? I'm not scared of it, actually, because it's a very nice house. It doesn't need work. But it's expensive. But it's expensive. And it's not that it's out of our price, right? We can afford it, but we're so comfortable because we live below our means right now. You know what I mean? So we are comfortable. We can, you know, go out and rent a van for freaking two grand, you know, and it's comfortable. So buy, we could buy new bikes. We just bought two new bikes. We literally just bought two bikes. You know, we live below our means. And I think that's it's super comfortable that way because I can have a nice car and I can go out and shop. And this stuff. question here. Do you think by us going to the other places, um, living with our truck and your car in the back, do you think that would be living below our means? Or do you think that's going to be like level to getting a house or just a little under? No, I think it'll be to like what we're at right now. You think it'll be the same as that we're yeah, now? Yeah, just because right now I feel like our expenses are below our means, but they're also not cheap. And I can't write off the house. No, you can't, but you can write off. <laughs> well, you, you can write off some of the house, but you cannot. But we can write off a freaking Airbnb, you know? Yeah, I don't know. And let's say, like, write offs aside, like, what's going to make us happy? Because that's, I think, the most important part. And I think... Well, what make me happy is not sending money to the freaking government that's what would make yeah, me yeah we just finished tax season so as you can tell oh, oh my gosh that's another that's one of the biggest things is like that's why we want to really explore the u.s because dude california is not that great that's all i gotta say it's not that freaking great i don't visit the beach much i don't need a beach so take off at least 10 percent. we literally go to the beach like once a year if that but truly to the people like wherever whenever you have nice things you don't really visit them people like from the outside of the places live well i'm scared of the beach me like too, bro. I'd rather do bro. a lake. Oh, man. Shark. Uh, if, if I'm paying X amount of money and I get a shark attack, I'm, or I get attacked by a shark, bro, like, you see? But, uh, no, I'm scared of the beach in the sense that, like, of the waves pulling me in. Like, dude, that Even surfing that, was yeah, the hardest uh -huh. thing I've ever done in my life. No, yeah, I'm scared of the beach. So, I already, I love a pool. I love a good pool. But I, I'm scared of the beach, so we don't really go. And it's always packed. And it's cold and dirty because we're in California. It's just not. Not the vibes at all. But yeah, that those are like our two little, like our two moves. It's either going to be a house or it's going to be like the little uh, traveling, right? And we're not going to be selling our properties because we want to have like a big uh, foundation for our future. And having a cash, yeah. having like cash flowing with our, yeah, and we have with our like, rentals, dude, we, that'd be we amazing. We have a good system. Like with 
Our properties are great. Like, like our they're upgraded. So we we got them low. Pretty much, yeah, we got them low, and we know that their potential is going to be super high. And I don't see myself selling this property for the next ten years. No, we already have equity on our property, so it's pretty it's pretty great. Like we have our investments pretty well distributed, and I think that's why it was great that we were living below our means because we were able to kind of set us up a little bit for like our foundation is like getting a little bit big. And so we have that room to be able to be like, okay, let's travel for a year. Let's travel for a year. You know, in the summer, we're going to live here. In the fall here, in the winter here, in the spring here. We'll do four seasons, four different states. That'd be so cool. Four seasons, wow. four states. <laughs> That'd be awesome. Winter, we got to go to Chicago for sure. Everyone's always telling mind? us. Everyone's always telling us. I think that's the coldest place in the world. Bro, bro doesn't know Antarctica. No, in the U.S., <laughs> babe. I think Chicago's cold as fuck. But imagine having a super cold but winter. But everyone loves Chicago. I will say, everybody always says that. If you're telling me a, a Chicago winter is colder than what we experienced in Utah and Idaho at night, yes. Oh no, you're tripping. Jake, Chicago, where the lake gets the freaking snow that's like twenty feet. That's what was happening over there, babe. The only Chicago difference is the sun was coming out. Was and- not warmer than Utah in the spring. I mean, was not. Colder than Utah in the spring. Wait, was not. Chicago's colder. By a lot. I'm pretty sure Chicago gets like in the one, one, two, three, four degrees. Right? Yes, it does. I don't Please, think Chicago it, people, I confirm. Don't, I don't know. I don't think it gets colder than pipes freezing. Like if, if the pipes freezing in Utah where we were, then the pipes are obviously going to be Babe, freezing over there. it was only there. like 20 degrees. Chicago, I'm sure, gets colder than that. I don't. It's not Canada. I know Canada gets pretty cold. Where's Chicago at? Is it up there? No, Chicago. Chicago's like, t- like a, I think the middle, the middle right, I believe. I don't know. I'm, I'm trying to, uh, trying to think where Chicago is. That's a Georgia. State. Where's Georgia? I Georgia. Have not a fucking it might be in like the upper middle right side. That's where I'm thinking. Where's Chicago at? In Georgia. Search up Georgia. Oh, it's in Georgia. Yeah. No. I remember last time you were like, no, Atlanta. it's in Atlanta. <laughs> no, isn't Atlanta in Georgia? Atlanta's a big, like a big city, just like Chicago. And it's in Illinois. Oh my gosh, I'm so dumb. Chicago, yeah. Georgia. Georgia, I'm pretty sure has Atlanta, bro. <laughs> I'm over here gassing you. It literally is by the border. Oh, is it? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Every time we talk about country states you guys understand why it's important to study your geography <laughs> yeah it's up there with like michigan to be honest i don't know where michigan is yeah at they either. get so much snow too oh damn all right but i just want to go ice skating in, the, in like the little chicago things well we could that's i thought you were 40 see i'm traumatized by you <laughs> see that's the beauty of like being able to but i wonder if we would want a home soon after that but i don't think so because i feel like i'm always kind of like on the go and i'm always trying to find a new environment and stuff so i don't know i don't and we you're very spontaneous that's what you are and i like that about you like you're never going to be comfortable in one spot but when making big purchases you can't be spontaneous if you're not a billionaire no you can't you can't once you get a house that's a million dollars you better be some ready to settle down for at least two years at least two years to your place. But, but, but you're very spontaneous and we did not think we'd be here for two years. So if we get a property that you like even more, I think you're going to say, all right, two years is my mark, but it's going to be maybe three, four. You never know. I you can always know. upgrade that spot. Like add this, add this, add this. Uh, another golden retriever. Okay. He needs a little yard to run. I do want another dog. Well, that's the reason why I wanted a, a bigger house and yard was because I wanted to get more dogs. I wanted to get a mini cow, a mini horse, a big horse. <laughs> we, we just want to get rescues did a rescue farm the jattily rescue farm yeah like we because there's so many animals that are killed at the slaughter farm all the time and the slaughter farm is like the, the auction right like where they take them yeah. yeah where they take them after they don't want them anymore like imagine how cool it would be to be able to give those animals a home because that's different like those animals are different than a dog right because like a horse we could keep it away from the dogs versus if we get another dog they're such social creatures in a different way to where we cannot keep another dog separated from these two that's too hard and that's not fair to the other dog versus another horse that's different right we're not gonna put ellie and theo with the horse so we can have a horse it's gonna be like the only animal right there yeah yeah yeah. that makes sense when we could get a little sheep for it too you know they send sheep to auction too (laughs) you know that why are you gonna get a sheep for a horse they're friends they won't be friends (laughs) they wouldn't even acknowledge that's like getting a dog and then getting a horse they're not gonna acknowledge each other quality hay 
the bougie hay. <laughs> the farmer's dog, you make hay. <laughs> That's going to get them the hay. I'm going to get them all the bougie stuff. Honestly, like, that's just my dream because I feel like all those animals are just sent to be killed, you know? Yeah, that sucks. And maybe I'm not going to be, like, the smartest dog person, but I'll give them some good food and I'll get them a trainer and I'll give them a home. Mm-hmm. That's better than, like, you could ride a, dying. I want to ride a mini horse. That's my dream. So I'm going to imagine. A mini horse? Bro's going to just lay down. <laughs> Bro's going to, his legs are going to go flat. It's going to be a table. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Yeah, so we don't know. We don't know what we want to do, and I think we're in that era. But everything, I feel like everything's going to fall into place. Like, it's just, we're going to know. There's potential both ways. Very, There's very much potential both ways. And that's why I think we're very open-minded to both, like, one or the other. Because if there was not potential in the big house where you're spending a lot of money in, then we wouldn't do it. But I know. we know what we can do with that. Yeah. And the videos we can create with that. But we also know what the videos we can create when traveling. We just can't do both. We cannot do both. No, we need to pick one. And whatever we pick, we have to stick to it for at least a year. Or honestly, not even for a year. We could travel for six months, go to three different places in three months. In six months. Do every two months, go to a different state. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I'm down for anything. You know, like, I'm down. I'm down to leave. I feel like, honestly, it would make it easier if you made up your mind. Do you want the the, the actual answer? What What do you want more? I think, I don't know, because I, I, f- I feel like this answer can answer for right now or f- could answer for the future, but I, at the, in, the, in the end, I want a big house. Okay. In the end. In the end. Right now or in the end, babe? Overall, I want a big house. Rather than traveling. Yeah. Okay. So, see that? No, no, no. Like, I don't know. I want to travel. That's the thing, too. But overall, like, whatever happens, I, wanna, I want a big house. Well, yeah, yeah. Me, too. And I think it's obviously the smarter decision to have. A real estate piece but um i just like i think about it through the money side that's that's why me too yeah see we can save up a lot we could traveling. save up more traveling and we could you know like rack up more maybe we get two million dollar house yeah in two see years, you know <laughs> so i just it's such a, a tough decision and we don't know what to do and like obviously the the easy choice i feel like it's like well they just pack up and go travel you know but there's a lot that comes with that decision as well like you know you get tired you, you get, get tired yeah like it's constant it's like travel is not really travel and fun it's more of like oh damn all right we're gonna we're gonna go to the beach and film everything and do this and that and i love filming and i i love vlogging i love doing all this but when it's when you're doing something every day that you like fall out of love from like the passion that you had with it originally and i think that can happen very easily if we don't balance it correctly yeah, but I think because we're going to be spending a, like a couple of months in each place, it gives us the rest home, days. It gives us the home vibes Correct. too. Correct. It gives us the rest Rather days. than van life, we were literally doing 10 days straight of filming. Of filming. And that was hard because you guys see our vlogs. Like our vlogs are very particular. It's not just pick up the camera film. No, like we have to like plan it, plan the shots. Like where are we going to put what? Where are we putting a voiceover? And we need to think about what shot to get to. Over- like it's very... Like, we try to really plan out our stuff and get good shots. It's more of a a master, not a master. It's a project versus just, oh, let me just bring out my camera and vlog. Like, no, we really try to. Yeah, it's not a mukbang. Yeah, we really try to get something good for you guys. So it it takes a lot of, like, a thought process. It's like you're creating a literal movie, right? Like, you have to make a project. You can't just whip it up out of nowhere. You know, you got to think how you want to lay it so it can flow and it can make sense. So it makes it a little bit tougher. And we were filming every single day for 10 days straight. And we had to make sure how to make, how do we make, how many, was it five stories? Yeah. How do we make five stories? Five stories. Because we did two vlogs for Dadley and we did three for my channel. In 10 days. That means it was an average of every two days we were filming a vlog. It was, no, every two days was a different vlog. It was difficult. Because not only was it the vlog, but it's like the weather conditions of each state was totally different than every other one that we were But that previously. was different, babe, because that was a series that we were doing, right? Versus... We decide to travel for a year, right? It's going to be like two months in each place or one month in each and place. And I'm going to love that. Like, I, yeah. I I don't know. I feel like both. There's no wrong answer for me here. Yeah. So whatever happens is going to happen. And, you know, if you get tired of it, there's always a plane. You can fly to we go visit. We could just get your, back. Yeah. We could literally pack our shit and come back. <laughs> Watch us make the decision. And then to, after the first month, we're back home. We're back. <laughs> but at least we tried. See, that's the thing. We'll never know if we don't try. Another thing is, once we rent out this property, I feel like it's going to be hard coming back because it was, it's not going to be your home anymore. Oh, it's going to be banged up walls. It's going to be banged up walls. It's going to be like... We wouldn't move back mm -hmm. in here, though. Yeah, we wouldn't move back in here. We would just come back, 
because we're we, gonna we buy would just a house. Come, we'll just come back and then buy the house we were originally gonna get now imagine that's the thing though like i think that house whatever happens with that house will be i think that's gonna give us Th- our that's answer. gonna be the true destiny of what's gonna be yeah, meant to be for us i think so too i think that'll give us our answer Ah, <laughs> it's so so stressful because i feel like we're also getting older and i i want to be ready to have kids when it's time to have kids and i don't want to feel like my biggest fear is just being a bad mom like i never want to bring a kid into this world and be a shit half-assed mom you know i want to be ready i want to be ready to really get educated on how to be a perfect mom not a perfect mom but a, a pretty damn good one and i want to be ready to settle down for my children and I don't want to feel like I got pregnant too young and then I'm still doing my little young activities. Even though I don't feel like I do young young activities, I guess traveling and stuff like that. But I don't want to feel like I'm not ready. So whatever we're going to do, we got to do it now. We got to anything that we feel like it's something on our bucket list that we want to do while we're young. We should do it while we're young and before we have kids and real responsibilities right before animals and stuff. Because those are my children. And they're, they're different. It's not like, you know, once you buy a horse, that's different. Yeah, everything you could, everything you love doing, you could do with them. I could do with them. So it's, it's a little different with these two, but I cannot add a third dog up until I'm Oh, ready. you can't. Let's tell them about a <gasps> little story. I almost bought a dog. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, okay, so this, it was either the second or third farm that we say that. Um, they had, like, dogs barking in the background. They're far, we're far from them, but we hear them barking, and they're like, okay, and then, uh, as she's greeting us, telling us about her farm, mm-hmm. she's like, yeah, we have a couple little doggies. We, they just had uh, puppies. And I'm like, oh, what kind? And then they said, like, what was the, the it's type of dog? a Bernese mountain dog. A Bernese or Burmese? I think With Bur- an N. No, it's, a, it's an M. It's a Bernese. It's a Burmese. Is it? Okay, St. Bernese. Saint, there's no Saint in it, babe. Oh, all right. Bernese mountain dog. That's the dog that it, that it is. And they had brought, like, they brought, like, four or five puppies. And now, as soon as she, as soon as she, uh, she seen the puppies, dude, she was like, Jake, Jake, can we it's please Bernice, take them? Yeah. Burn? Burn. Yeah. As, she, as soon as she seen them, she wanted to take them home. And she was literally contemplating like, Jake, we could take this dog home. We could go in the van and like drive. It could be another story. I'm like, nah, he was I'm not so ready for cute. this. I am not ready for another puppy. Puppies are like starting day one, dude. Like I can't start day one. Thea still messes up. We tell you this all the time. Ellie, Ellie ate a just chocolate messed cake up. today. Ellie ate, <laughs> like chocolate cake we got at a strawberry farm. <sighs> she had to be placed when we left for the first time in like two years. She hasn't been she placed in, in that trouble. long. She was in trouble. Poor baby. And of course, and of course, the favorite uh, mom over here wanted to. No, she's fine. She did it on accident. She was hungry. I forgave Bruh. her already. She doesn't have to be placed. Anymore. I didn't forgive her yet. I know she's bad. He's I, so good. I know it because Thea has been placed for the past two years, right? Yeah, because Ellie, Thea no. will rip shit up in the pantry, Jake. You know As soon this. as you close the pantry door, nothing else gets Case ripped closed. Up. I slept on it, and I decided that I didn't want the dog anymore because I realized that. You did not sleep on it. It took, like, three nights for you to sleep on okay, it. Okay, I slept on it three nights. And then also, I found out that this dog, they're from Switzerland, so they're used to snow. How fucked up would it be if I just got it and I brought it to my city in Southern California? Yeah. That's rude. <laughs> That's messed up. That's rude. They're <laughs> used to Idaho snow. I see them on TikTok too. Like they don't want to leave the snow. Just yeah. like go to retriever with a with a pool. With they don't want to leave the pool. Yeah. They didn't want to leave the snow. So I it's know. like, oh, That's you can't mean. take it away. That's so mean. It's like getting a, you know, like a freaking, I don't know, a husky in the, like Arizona or something. You know, that's, <laughs> it's just not nice. So I'm just not gonna, I'm, I was not gonna do it. Maybe if we get a place with like snow, then I could do it, but not right now. Some, at least a little bit of snow or at least a little colder. Than where we're at right now. Uh-huh. Or I, a big yard. Yeah, somewhere. let's we could do it later. We can get a dog later, but I mean look, okay, look this is what I told that. If we get a house, I'll buy you a dog because we have enough space for it. But right now we don't have enough space for another dog. But if we do the van life, then we can have time to build up the a bigger house. The van life or the travel. I mean the travel, we have enough time to build up a bigger house. Yeah. Or we could do the van life. Which which Va- van life is gonna be harder. Van life will be harder, but it'll save more money. But I don't give a damn. No, I'd rather have get get houses than be like pissed in a van. <laughs> Dude, not even being able to use number two in the rest. I mean, no, in the van the is thing. hard. No, babe. The thing is that with the van that we rented, it's because there's little things that we would tweak to our own, right? Like we would add a shower and we would add a poop toilet. Fix those issues. Oh, are you going to be untwisting the cap of the poop toilet, Natalie? Uh, it's a bag. 
So I just throw the bag out? You have to tie it like if it's like dog poop. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're doing that. <laughs> Dude, I, that was, it was cool. Like it was a cool experience doing that. We had to uh, empty out the pee cans and like the, or the pee tank from the from the van. And it man, wasn't bad, Jake. Man, I wouldn't do van you didn't, life. Oh, no, no, no. But you didn't see what the color was. I this don't how, even, Don't tell me. Don't okay, tell look, me. This is how unhealthy we were. It looked like <laughs> I was pouring out orange juice. Tell me why I seen pulp. Now imagine. Oh, shoot. Babe. Part oh my two. Gosh. No, no, no. Oh my! Jacob, I'm gonna kill you. I've decided you're getting kicked off of this podcast, yeah, bro. Jacob, hurry! It's sinking. Oh my god! Give me this. Okay, can you please keep your hands within your little box right here, please, sir? Bro, oh man! If you missed like the last podcast, he did the same thing. I'm except be, it went everywhere. I need to be created just like the dogs now. Yeah, you know what? We're getting crate for Jake next. Um, what was I saying that made me? Touch this. You're just yapping with your hands. Me too, though, but... Oh, <laughs> the orange juice and pulp. It looked like I had pulp in it. No, nah, I'm just oh, kidding. It didn't, but... No, yeah, I'd, I I would totally do van life. I would do van life again, but yeah. I don't know. I, I feel like it's just a lot of... um. It took a little bit off my body, and I was doing it for like five, because, 10 days, bro. No, That's it was nothing. because, babe, we literally had to cross like six states in a matter of a week and a half. I think it's that because we're doing, we're doing like truck driver hauls. We were. We were literally in a different state every two days. And only every two days because of the weather conditions. If our if our van was four by four, we would have been there in every day, a different state every day. Yeah, that's why. But see, if we were living in a van, we wouldn't be in a rush. It would have been easier. I'm down for it. I don't know. I'm down for anything. I'm down for me the too. van. I'm down for the other thing. Like I'm down. Let me know. Put me. Put me on. Oh, we gotta we gotta finesse the system. Put me on your payroll as a dri as your designated driver or designated driver, and then I'll put you on my payroll for like editor or something because you can edit my reels. I don't want to edit shit, but I will put you as my driver. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, but we, we, that's our little dilemma. And I'm so glad that we actually have a platform that we could actually speak with you guys because it's real nice. Like we're we, we like hearing your feedback as well. So what do you think? What should we do? I think there's no wrong answer. That's what I really, that's, I really yeah. think that. And I feel like we can do anything we can if we put our mind to it. Yeah. Like we, there, there's, and then another thing is like, we could totally say where we are, but I think it's time to do, make something, make a different move. We've been here for two years. I'm ready to change my life up. I don't know how, but in a way, like I need to change it, whether that's buying a new house, it's traveling, it, it, it's something like getting a van and going in a van around town. Like I for sure think we need to change the scenery because it's been, I feel like two years and I want to experience more. We're running a half marathon, which is super No, fun. I should tell them. Aww. Why not? Okay, okay, yes, we are running a half marathon, 13 miles, and we are preparing for it. So in a little while, I have to go put my running shoes on, put my running gear on, and do my mile for the first time. And I, I feel like that's something that we're, we, I feel like we just give ourselves things to do to, like, give our give spice to our life. Like, Yeah, that's super important with, uh, to do in your life, and I don't like running, but I did it. I wanted to do this. I don't know. I've got, like, a little, like a, a little pinch in my brain, like, try running. Let's do it. I like, I could run with a ball. Why can't I run without a ball? There shouldn't be a reason why I can't run without a ball. We so. literally got bikes and we've been doing biking and biking is tiring. Like if you've ever done biking, like, you know, that shit is hard. Like it, it's tiring, but like we've been biking, we're going to do a half marathon, like just trying to spice up our life and just random ass. We literally went on a van it for is, two weeks. Like, dude, it is our first time running and we're doing a half marathon. So well, give I us some cross, tips. I was in cross country growing in middle school. I was in track. That's different though. Cross country is like. How much was the... Dude, they're still banging shit up. Yeah, like, we would do miles on miles on miles. Like, all of our trainings, they were, like, I, like at least three miles. Yeah, I, I did, like, the short-distance hurdles. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I oh, ate, I remember you I did hurdles. I ate shit after the, the second hurdle, I believe. Yeah. Track was... <laughs> I think, did I do track in high school? No, I didn't do... I only did cross-country. It was hard. Not in high school. I did in middle school. And it was hard. But it was it was fun. And I would, like... You know, I want to start running again. I'm really excited, actually, to document that entire journey. I'm doing a huge documentary on it. I'm so excited. But we're just trying to figure out, like, what we want to do, what direction we're taking in life. We're not sure. So let us know what you think. And what are you guys trying to do with your life right now? Let us know. There's no rush. Remember that. There's no rush in life. Everyone has their own space. I mean, uh, their own, their own time. time. Yeah, so... We're just... I don't know. I like to make my life difficult. And I feel like I always feel like there's a clock on us, even though there isn't a clock on us, but... Please give us running tips. Please. Yes. Running tips are needed. Mm -hmm. Don't make fun of me if I have a vest on just because I'm running a 5K. I got the Lululemon vest. Oh, we're running a no, we're running a 10K, right? I'm just kidding. Huh? We're running a 10K? A half marathon, Jake. What's a half marathon? 
10K means 10,000. 5K means 5,000. What's the difference? 5,000 steps. Can you tell who signed us up? <laughs> this guy doesn't even know he's running. I'm running 13 miles, and I haven't ran one mile yet. So it's coming up in a couple mm-hmm. months. I'm about to go run. I'm sorry, I got a bubble ball in my mouth. I'm about to go run. Today I'm going to aim for two miles. Ah, oh, I'm excited. For me, I think I'm going to I'm gonna walk a mile, and then I'm going to try to beat... Like, a, I'm not trying to beat a time. No, you shouldn't per do that. Se. I'm just trying to see what, how fast I can do without getting tired in one mile. I don't know if that made sense. Mm-mm. Just sub, te- sub 11, sub 11 mile should be easier. Okay. Whatever that means. Under 11. Oh, sub 11. Oh, I didn't even know that's what it meant. All right. We're going to wrap up the podcast, guys, because our camera has low battery. Oh. So we're going to end it there. Thank you guys so much for hearing us. Yeah, for another hour, yet another day. Let us know your opinions and what we should do. And thank you guys so much for 503K on Jadaly. <gasps> yeah, Dude, we've been we growing so much. 503 now. 503. But yeah, if you enjoy the podcast, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And we will see you guys in the next one. Bye. Bye.